This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a returning guest. I'm super excited to have him back on the show. Matter of fact, his revenues for 2017 has outperformed the whole year of 2016. That is a fact. We're talking no other than Luxaria Bioscience. They trade on the OTCQB, ticker symbol LXRP. And with us today is the CEO of that company, Chris Bunka. Chris, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Everett. I'm real happy to be here and, and get you up to date. You know, it's been three months since the last time you've been on the show. It's a little bit longer than I would uh, like you to be away, but uh, thank you anyway for coming back on the show. Bring us up to date what's been happening in the last three months. Well, it's been a whirlwind for us. Um, Lexari has just been through a lot, and it's been uh, just overwhelmingly positive. Um, About three months ago, for example, probably right around the time that I was first on the show, uh, we had just closed our financing rounds. Uh, We had strengthened and improved and repaired our balance sheet, which was looking pretty, pretty nasty a year ago. We just finished raising $4 million U.S. Uh, We have most of that money in the bank today. Uh, So that's behind us. We're not interested in raising money any longer. Um, A couple of weeks ago, we were awarded our first international patent on our technology. Uh, That was in Australia. Um, We've developed a million-dollar R&D budget for the rest of 2017 and 2018. Uh, we've started our work with the National Research Council of Canada, which is a, a um, semi-autonomous arm of the Canadian federal government. Um, and I think that we are, so far as I know at least, we are the only company that has applicability to the cannabis space in North America that has a federal government uh, in North America that's working with us on our, on our science and our R&D. Um, and just to remind everybody what we are and what we do, Lexaria has developed patented technology that allows for much higher rates of absorption for things like cannabinoids, vitamins, NSAIDs. NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, things you know like Advil and um, aspirin, that sort of thing, and even for nicotine. Um, we have started to attract a lot of attention from entities, governments, uh, uh, pharma, uh, much bigger than we are, because people are starting to understand what Lexaria is. And what we are is a, a technology that's a layer of the onion. We allow for the delivery of these other molecules better than they are being delivered today. So we can get more of them into your bloodstream, which means that you could, uh, in theory, take smaller doses to get the same pain relief, for example. Or in the cannabinoid space, take smaller doses to get the same effect that you're looking for. And in particular for medical marijuana patients, uh, people who have to medicate three, four, six times a day in some cases, uh, our ability to deliver non-psychoactive cannabinoids at a much higher rate and much more quickly, um, that's a big deal. And, and anybody, you know, if, if you've got a headache, you want your pain medication to act fast. That's a big deal. Um, I suffer from migraines myself. I know how important that is. So the fact that our technology over and over again has been proven to deliver uh, the payload molecule to the bloodstream in 15 to 25 minutes as opposed to what is generally 60 to 90 minutes, that means a lot to a lot of people. So we've been really busy uh, working with uh, all of these uh, different entities, um, uh, and uh, even starting some uh, R&D on nicotine between now and uh, and uh, the rest of the year. So we're getting that design process underway. Yeah, I saw that. You know, matter of fact, I uh, was reading on one of the press releases, you guys are working with the NRC of Canada. Can you bring us up to speed on that? Yeah, absolutely. So the NRC is uh, National Research Co- uh, Council of Canada, sort of like your National Institute of Health, your NIH in the U.S., 
um, very well funded, um, very, very um, a highly accomplished organization. We're very lucky uh, to be working with them. And we are working on some basic um, uh, basic science around what it is that our process does. We know that our process works. It's patented. Uh, we use it in consumer products already. Um, and we are in discussions with lots of companies to license that technology. Um, but with all of that achieved, we, are, we have not answered all of the questions around it. So we do not know if we've created a liposomal sac, if we have a molecular conjugation. We don't know a number of things. And so using very advanced equipment um, that would be outside of our ability to, to purchase, uh, that's for sure, uh, we're, we're going to be answering those questions. Um, so, so that is um, a fundamental um, uh, deeper understanding that we will gain of exactly what we've done with these molecular conjugations uh, that we believe we've created. And having those answers will um, much, uh, very much uh, enable us to um, uh, tweak or, or, or perfect that technology for the different applications ahead, whether that's in um, you know, consumer pain relief, such as NSAIDs, whether it's in cannabinoids, or one of the things that's really exciting is this, this whole idea with nicotine. You know, the FDA just came out and said that they're looking at regulating the quantity of nicotine in cigarettes for the first time ever. I don't know wow. if people are aware of that. Yeah, uh, the amount of nicotine in your cigarettes is, is actually not um, limited by the uh, FDA currently. Um, that's likely to change according to their press release. And um, we believe that our technology is the first technology in the world that um, should allow for the delivery of nicotine through common foodstuffs, like a cup of coffee, Everett. Imagine if you're a smoker in an office, instead of having you know two or three times a day to run out to the street to have a cigarette, um, you could have a little bit of nicotine in your cup of coffee. Mm. Um, so the idea being um, to satisfy that, that urge for the nicotine without actually having to have a cigarette. Um, so there's some very profound uh, positive health effects from that. We're really proud to be able to work on something like that. And we have to do a lot more research. Um, but so far, the preliminary research is looking positive, and we plan on doing our first nicotine-based research uh, between now and Christmas. It sounds like you guys have a lot going on. you got a lot in the hopper and everything. With so much going on, what is the outlook for shareholders and what you might think that they can expect to see any kind of significant revenues as a sign of progress. And like I said earlier, I think that your first two quarters have outperformed 2016, but we're not really talking a lot in revenue. So when, when do we see the big explosion that you might think, Chris? That's a really fair question. And, and the reality is, yes, our revenues are up um, uh, over what they were, but um, they're really still just uh, what we would call demonstration revenues. Absolutely. We're demonstrating that, you know, these products, that this technology works. So the revenues are still very, very small. Uh, we think that is going to change. I mean, uh, it, would be, it would be wrong for me on, on different levels um, to try to give a projection at this point because we, we just don't know for sure. But, but here's the reality. We're talking to a number of companies right now, in some cases uh, working on, on paperwork for letters of intent and different things, different stages of negotiations with, say, oh, you know, four to six companies right now around North America that each have, you know, revenue streams of their own products in, you know, say just in the cannabis sector, say in the, you know, maybe 20 to $80 million a year each. Wow. Uh, and those companies are looking at adopting our technology. And of course we work on a royalty basis. So, I guess the, the most accurate way that I can answer that question is to say that we are one deal, we are one signature away from not just having, um, as you said, an explosion in revenues, but going directly to positive cash flow or even profitability. Uh, any one of those deals could easily deliver a million dollars a year to us or more 
in revenue. The biggest ones we're looking at are worth several million dollars a year in revenue. And and it won't be lost on you. You probably talk to lots of companies. The licensing model is is arguably the highest quality revenue model that is known in the business world. Somewhere between ninety and a hundred percent of our mar- of our revenues are profit, right? Um, because it costs us virtually nothing uh, to push the repeat button. Uh, so, so we think we're close, and then it really comes down to timing. Uh, when when might that happen? Well, we're talking to companies in Nevada and California. We're talking to companies in Canada. We're even talking to companies internationally outside of North America. I personally believe we will have our first major deal signed in the next 90 days. Um, you know, California has got all the new laws coming in on January 1 on Absolutely. the cannabis side. Canada has all of its new laws coming in next June, July. So the timing is really, really good because these companies realize they have to do things to comply and, and to be successful under the new regulated environments. Here's a key regulation is great news for Lexaria because under regulation, uh, legislators are demanding that uh, cannabis companies in particular are more responsible about how they deliver their products, and we can help do that. So I think uh, that's a long answer, but, I mean, here we are. It's it's uh, the summer of, of 2017. If you look back a year ago, we were we were just a skeleton. We were barely <laughs> surviving. It was so hard, but we've raised a lot of money. We've advanced our science. We've had two patents awarded since then. I think in the next 12 months, you won't even recognize Lexaria. If you look at it today and look at where we're going to be in 12 months, I think we're going to be an entirely different company. Lexaria Bioscience Corp. is the company that we're highlighting today here on Stock Day. They trade on the OTCQB, ticker symbol LXRP. They have a small float around 40 million shares. Their market cap is about 27 million. And their stock price is 41 cents, which for a biotech, I find that very, very undervalued. I think they could probably go 10 times higher than that. Chris won't say it, but I'll say it. This stock is very undervalued. So you should take a look at it. What we learned today, they got money in the bank. They're ready to make things happen. They got a patent. They got a new patent. And they're on the move to make some uh, business transactions to bring revenues in. Chris, in closing, is there anything that we didn't touch upon that you would like to get out there to the listeners? Oh, gosh. You know, there's just, there's just so much. I mean, watch, watch for us to expand both vertically within the cannabis market. Uh, that means generating a lot of revenues, uh, we think, soon. And also watch, to, watch us to expand horizontally as we enter different sectors like uh, NSAIDs and, and possibly even nicotine over the next 12 months. I think that's going to really surprise a lot of people. Well, I think they're just in the, the first inning, second inning at best in their development of their company. Surely things are going to grow from here at 41 cents. I want to thank you for coming on the show. I wish you nothing but continued success. Hopefully you won't wait 90 to 100 days to come back on my show. Hopefully you'll come back in 45 or 50 days and give us an update. That's a fair comment. Thanks, Everett, for having me. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent, and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or this station.